Yo guys, so Apple Silicon is here and it's kind of a big deal and I want to talk to you about it. So yeah, let's let's roll the intro. So first off, what is Apple Silicon? Apple Silicon is basically the fact that Apple are now using their own chips for the entire Mac lineup, the same way they use their own chips for iPad and iPhone with the A11, A11 Bionic, A12, all of that. But instead of Intel, now Apple are using their own custom chips. And they will be occupying the roles of the CPU and the GPU, which is basically the processing and the graphics. And I'm definitely confident about how they're going to handle the processing CPU aspect of Apple Silicon, but it's going to be interesting to see the way they handle it as a GPU because that will be something new. So we'll see how that is. And that will basically affect gaming and applications which are heavily reliant on graphics. But why overall are we supposed to be happy about this? Why is it exciting? Why is it good? Well, first off, based off of just Apple's track record, their chips usually end up working out really, really well with their iDevices. So with the iPad and iPhone, they are both one of the most powerful devices in their field because of those Apple chips. And that that's just you know, it's very reassuring for what is to come to max. But if you wanted to go deeper into that, why are they more powerful? Well, that is because since Apple are making the chips and Apple make their own software and Apple make their own hardware and Apple do everything for their devices, they can get optimization that other companies may not be able to get. So since Apple are creating these things, they can get them to basically work together and give you the best result with the best user experience because they own both things and can get them to work together properly and that is what optimization is and that is a huge benefit to apple making their own chips now whereas with intel you can only do so much because intel have their chips you have your software you need to do your best to adapt your software to intel's chip but you can't do anything to the chips so the optimization only goes up to a certain extent whereas when you have control over both sides you can get one of the best optimization experiences possible plus the fact that this is already reliable because of apple's track record and you know that their chips tend to do well in the first place now on top of this another great benefit is that they're cheaper to make there's no getting around the fact that you have to pay intel's high prices when you want to get intel chips into your product so with apple making their own chips it costs them less but this doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be cheaper for the consumer now i don't know what apple are going to do here because apple silicon is cheaper to use if we're lucky apple might drop the price on macbooks because of this but if we're not lucky then apple will just notice that they can make more profit here and then keep the prices where they are and just end up making more money because the chips are cheaper so this could go both ways but it's worth knowing because there's a chance i think that we could be getting cheaper macbooks in the future so hopefully that happened but now a transition is going to have to take place all the macbooks are going to have to change from apple silicon and applications are going to have to be programmed to run and work with apple silicon but people are still using Intel devices. So Intel devices still have to be supported and there has to be some kind of system in which both devices, Intel and Apple Silicon devices are supported at the same time while making it easy for developers. And at the same time, we've got to move forward with the transition. So the transition is going to take two years for Apple Silicon to take over the next line of Macs, iMacs, MacBook Pros, MacBooks. 13 inch, 16 inch, all of that. But in the meantime, as I said, Intel is going to be supported and it's going to continue to be supported for probably maybe, maybe just under a decade because whoever bought Intel devices now is still going to want them working for a while. And Apple want the transition to really, really be seamless in the sense that all apps are going to work the same. And from a user's perspective, they're not going to notice a difference. It's basically invisible other than the fact that you're, you know, it's faster and it's a benefit for Apple. And it is a big change in the whole entire computer industry. But in terms of direct user interface with the applications, they're going to work the same now as they are in the future with Apple Silicon with no change in code and an identical experience in terms of the application running. And how is this going to happen? This is going to happen because of Apple's developer app Xcode, which is going to be able to run apps on both platforms. So you do one set of code that works on both Intel and Apple Silicon. 
and there's also a developer tool called Rosetta 2 which will allow for current apps built for Intel Apple devices to seamlessly run on Apple Silicon. It will directly translate the app from Intel over to Apple Silicon and it will run identically. So Apple are really, you know, they've really prepared for this. But an important thing to remember is it is a next chapter for Mac. This is why the new version of Mac OS is Mac OS 11 and we've had Mac OS 10 for about 20 years. It is a new chapter for Apple. It is a big deal. And with this, we can expect redesigned hardware for Mac. Because it's an entirely new chapter, Apple are really, really proud and they really do want to signify this new chapter, which means we're going to expect redesigned Mac hardware. And this definitely makes sense for the redesigned iMac that's been rumored for a while. And we can expect it soon, the iPad Pro design like iMac coming soon, along with redesigned MacBooks because of this new chapter. Something, by the way, that's also worth mentioning is the fact that Boot Camp is no longer supported, basically meaning that you can't install Windows on a partition of your Mac hard drive because, you know, Windows works with Intel, Apple Silicon, and Windows, they don't, you know, they don't match, so, yeah. So that does kind of suck a little bit. So that's Apple Silicon described in a video. But first, before we end of the video, I do want to address a question that a lot of people do have. And that is, should you wait for a Apple Silicon Mac to come out to buy one? Or should you just go ahead and buy one now? And what are the pros and cons of both sides? The first thing I want to say is if you are able to wait and the update to a new MacBook isn't urgent, then I definitely do recommend that you wait and hold on to your current laptop because you're going to be entering a new era for Mac that Apple are going to be very, very focused on. And so it's going to be future proofed and it's going to be Apple's priority over Intel, which is a very, very good reason to wait. So if you can, if it isn't urgent, yeah, definitely wait. It's definitely the better option. But if you can't wait because you need a laptop right now for whatever reason, then there is nothing wrong with going for it now. Apple's Intel computers are still more than capable, and for a lot of people, this extra optimization that you're getting with Apple Silicon isn't essential in comparison to what's already here on the Intel devices. And for a lot of people, especially for the average consumer, the difference isn't even going to be noticeable. And of course, Intel Macs are still going to be supported for many, many years to come. So basically, in short, if you can wait, wait, but if you can't, there's no problem just going ahead and buying an Intel Mac now. So yeah, that's um that's that. That's Apple Silicon in a video. If you want to check out my Mac OS 11 walkthrough, the link is in the top right corner in the info card because that was a banging video and you should go check it out. But that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Check out my Instagram and Twitter at the Ramen in the Car, especially my Instagram because there's a lot of behind the scenes, a lot of, you know, just tech on your feed and it just helps me out and on top of this if you leave a like and comment that also really really helps because that helps with the algorithm and the video is more likely to get pushed out to more people and as you can see i'm a small channel so that helps and if you do feel like subscribing feel free in fact just you know just do it anyway i'm trying to just yeah okay i hope you guys enjoyed the video and i will see you in the next one salam so